As with the earlier videos covering wildlife and enemies, I won't be covering all of the bosses, but I will be covering the few that I found noteworthy. It seems that both of the world bosses seen in the network test won't chase the player very far. In addition to this, the boss's HP doesn't immediately reset when you flee. At least some of the world bosses, such as the Tree Sentinel, may be visible at a distance, so long as they're not like Flying Dragon Agil and spawn in as you approach. The Demi-Human Chief found in the Descender's Cave confirms multiple boss fights. This seems to be pretty early in the game, and is similar to earlier bosses like the Bell Gargoyles. This fight also confirms that Elden Ring will have bosses with separate enemies. Pumpkinhead is a boss that you can find in a small rune in the post town remains. Their helmet, which can be worn by the player, might be one of the new meme helms, assuming the Corollos mask doesn't win over. One thing that's interesting about this boss is that you can see it summoned in the Godric fight in the gameplay preview. This makes you wonder if other side bosses, such as the Burial Tree Watchdog, might be summonable as well. There's a unique area later in the network test called the Forlorn Hound Everjail. Inside this landmark, there's a boss called Bloodhound Knight Darrowill. This boss is reminiscent of the Outrider Knights from Dark Souls 3. It uses a curved greatsword seen in the gameplay preview, and even uses the same weapon skill. I'm guessing this is a unique weapon and skill, and wouldn't be swappable to other weapons. This landmark has some interesting implications. I wonder if there's other creatures locked away, and I wonder why this is the case. At the very least, this makes for another landmark to look for while scouring the map. Margaret the Fell is the last boss that can be reached in the network test. It's a great fight overall, and I really like how he's a mix of Battle Mage and Weapon Master. One thing that I noticed is that player suggested that he automatically threw knives when the player casts spells. This would make the fight especially tricky as a spellcaster. However, in my experience, this isn't the case. It seems he just has a high likelihood of throwing his knives when the player is far away. Luckily, these knives are easy to sidestep at a distance. Even though I really liked it, the fight was generally pretty easy. I found his attacks easy to dodge, and the fight would likely be just as easy with a melee build.